this year we're going to have Pesach again on the same date, the 15th of Nisan, as it is every year. However, there are going to be some differences, uh, largely because of the effects of the coronavirus um, scare and the ensuing changes that have to be made. One of them is that there w will probably not be any communal cashering like we normally have in the Aguda, and I believe that Glen Avenue also has that, uh, maybe in other places that they will not be this year, because every place, first of all, the Aguda is closed, and besides that, it's any place where there's a gathering of uh, people basically as we've tried to close it up so that it shouldn't happen to minimize the spread of the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So which means that anyone who has bought new Kalim this year is going to have a problem because you, because, uh, or anyone who, rather, who needs to cash a Kalim is going to have a problem. Now you could buy new Kalim, but there's also a problem because the uh, uh, Kalim Mikvahs in this town are, are going to be closed for the same reason. Not that there's a problem with the water, because the water is treated with chlorine, but the problem is that people gather together at the places where you toggle, and that's something which you want to avoid. So even though there's a, really a mitzvah and a chiv to toggle kalim, certain kalim which require tefillah, but there's a problem with the koch nafashas over here, which overrides the um, need to do this mitzvah. So the first thing, I wish to say is that there is no chiyuv if you want to keep Pesach properly, there's no chiyuv to be total kalim. If you have everything you need for Pesach, a whole set of cutlery, a whole set of dishes and pots and pans for Pesach, you don't have to kasha. You only have to kasha if you need to kasha. So that's the first thing. Now, there, if a person doesn't have enough cutlery, my suggestion is that this year we should um, buy a disposable cutlery made from plastic. Plastic doesn't have to, um, if it's new, you don't have to cashier it and you don't have to table it. So even though it's not such a covered yontif to use disposable plastic plates and plastic um, uh, cutlery as to use the, the, real, the real thing, but it's also it's, uh, not a, um, a code of yontif um, that it's not, it's not a code of yontif to use kalim, which you didn't kasha, which need kashering, which is really a violation of the halacha of yantav, which is also not a covenant of yantav. There's no bigger bizarian of yantav, degradation of yantav, than to use things which are not kasha the Pesach. So therefore, this is the small of the two evils. And this is something which we would um, be required to do for this Pesach. Um, now, the, if you have a pot or various things which need uh, kashering, which have been used for chametz, and you can't, um, and you and you need to use them for Pesach, you can kash them in your house. You don't have to kash them in a place where there's communal kashering, it just makes it easier for you. Now, if you uh, want to figure out um, how to kasher it, if you're not used to kashering on your own, um, so 
the, um, there are various halachas which are important to know about uh, kashering. They are enumerated in the Kitsa Shochan Arach, if you have one, Min Simon Kufta Zion. And um, over there it speaks about which kalim you can kasha and which ones you cannot kasha. And the ones that you can kasha, how do you kasha them? Can, can you kasha them with the hot water method? Or do you have to kasha them with the heat method? So all of that is designated over there. Also in the Pesach directory, which Sake put out, uh, the new one this year, yeah, there's a lot of information about kashering, about a lot of other things which are necessary for a yid to know for Pesach, besides lists of uh, medicines which are kosher Pesach, and lists of uh, um, personal products which are maybe used on Pesach, which products do need a hersha for Pesach, and which ones can be used without a hersha for Pesach. It's all in there, and it would be a good thing if you could get hold of one. So it, w it would be a, a good thing if someone who's knowledgeable with the um, ins and outs of how he's supposed to kasha should be present at the time that all of this is happening. So if your husband is a ben Torah and he knows about this, or even if he's not a ben Torah and he knows how to kasha, is a from Eid, Baruch Hashem, so then he should be there. But um, if not, you could look into these two sources that I mentioned and you'll have a very good idea about how to do it. The, um, there's something new this year. We redid an experiment to figure out how much of a matzah is considered a kazayas. Now, I, we did, went through this about 30, 30, 40 years ago, and we did the experiment, and we concluded, and we used the hand matzahs of Tzelm Papa Bakery, which were thin matzahs, and we came out that a third of a matzah is considered a kazayas, the chal hadeus, everyone is maida, and actually can be used for two kazaysim, if, uh, in, which is preferable to be used for the moitzi matzah. One kazayas kanega moitzi, another kazayas kanega matzah, but there you don't have to be machmir so much. And we say it is considered two kazaysim, and it's considered the one kazayas that you must eat on um, Pesach night, both nights of Pesach, both men and women are equally required to to eat a kazais and matzah on both of those nights, min ha -tayra. And it's also considered two kazaisim. The same thing is for the afikaiman, that lachat kodi should eat two kazaisim, one kanega the chagiga, one kanega the pesach. Um, but you have you should eat one kazais, and this will fill the need for one kazais and two kazaisim. Which means that all in all, you have to eat one of the, uh, we said it was a third of a hand matzah, Tzayam Papa matzah, which had a, um, which had a um, diameter of ten and a half inches, which was a relatively small matzah, and so a bigger matzah maybe was less. And the, um, if someone has a problem eating the matzah, he could be make all with half of that share, which would be a sixth of a matzah. Now this year we redid this experiment and it came out differently. That it was um, the amount that we need for Chomodiga Kazayas, with Yoyotso Cholodeus would be a Kazayas, would be a half of, a, of one of these matzahs. And the, um, if someone has a problem with eating it, he could be Mekel Bidiyevid with a quarter of the matzah. Of the matzah. Now, now the question is, did we make a mistake when we measured it last time, and now is the right is right, or did we make a mistake this time and the last time was right? 
Okay, so it's my thinking that both times were right. Um, the matzahs actually became thinner over the last 40 years. Um, and the thinner matzah tastes better, it may be baked better, but um, um, they are famous for their thin matzahs. And the reason why we, I say that is because we also rechecked the machine matzahs, and there was relatively the same. We used a matzah from the Hadar Chabur Shmura, and uh, from the, Jerus uh, the Jerusalem matzahs, we used both. There were slight differences, but the, basically it was the same as it was 40 years ago. So therefore we're assuming that um, the uh, machine matzah didn't change and the hand matzah did change. So last time we said that for a machine matzah you needed a half a matzah and um, but if you can eat it at that much so you give yatsu with a quarter. Another half matzah will be considered the two kazasin. Someone has a problem with eating matzah, he gets sick, he is, uh, is allergic um, to the wheat so then you can be made with a quarter and you won't be just, uh, the Indian of having to possess him because that's not such a serious chiyuf, it's just a chumrah. So for someone who gets, uh, who gets sick from it, it doesn't have to be machmed. Now, <coughs> there are certain products that are initially, that are intrinsically rather Kashla uh, Pesach and do not need a Heksha. So, the, for instance, isopropyl alcohol, this rub alcohol, which you can get in every, in every um, supermarket, and certainly in every pharmacy, is, has no chametz in it. It's not made from chametz, it's made from petroleum, and there's no problem with it. Now, the ethyl alcohol could be made from petroleum and could be made from grain. So there, you, that you cannot use on Pesach without a, a hersha for Pesach. Aluminum foil, in general, does not need a hersha. So you can buy any aluminum foil. It doesn't need a hersha for Pesach. Any aluminum foil should be, should be kosher. Baking soda doesn't need a hersha for Pesach. Baking powder does need a hersha for Pesach. Now, the charcoal briquettes which you can roast uh, meat with or, or whatever else you want to roast, um, they are in general kosher Pesach unless they're made from whiskey barrels. And they would advertise that. They would say uh, whiskey barrel uh, briquettes and then uh, you should not use them because the whiskey in general is chametz. If you have 100% pure cocoa, um, it should be Koshla Pesach, unless it says that it's made in a company that has a chametz, which if, you, if it does that, so then you have to be worried that maybe there's a chametz that was involved with this somehow, and that, that you should not eat. So there are, there are um, products like um, um, unflavored Folgers coffee, is um, Kasha La Pesach. There's Taste's Choice, things made by Nestle if it is unflavored. And um, the, the regular instant is Kasha La Pesach. The Trader Joe's unflavored, regular um, um, gr gr ground coffee is Kasha La Pesach. Without, and these are all without any special hersha for Pesach. Same thing is with dishwash soap, um, which uh, would be Ajax, Cascade, Dawn, um, Palmolive, uh, the regular, the ultra, they all are um, kosher for Pesach with their regular hersha without the hersha of, uh, for Pesach. Um, eggs, 
you should buy before Pesach. Um, it's a minig, but if for some reason it is, and the reason why we do that is because the eggs, uh, the uh, the chickens eat to eat jam, and we're afraid that maybe the, the um, that they uh, cause this these eggs to be laid, and they use it, the chicken use it in the production of these eggs. So we we machme to get buy them before Pesach, just like we machme on milk to to eat before Pesach, unless the cows were given a kosher Pesach diet. So the um, however, if this year there's going to be a shortage of eggs and it won't be possible to get eggs before Pesach, so but yeah, you can buy them on Pesach. From the time that the chicken lays the egg until it gets to the supermarket, it's probably as a few days, and um, so it probably was from before Pesach anyway, especially the beginning of of Chalamayid. Now, kosher fi- fish, which is fresh, which has the skin on it, you can assume that it's kosher Pesach, and you don't have to. Um, uh, be worried about anything. And I'm not talking about frozen. I'm talking about fresh kosher fish uh, with the skin should be should be no problem without a special hechsha for Pesach. Now, the um, frozen juices, orange um, and white grapefruit without um, any sweeteners added or enrichments we should be um, kosher for Pesach without a special Pesach hersha. The um, If you have uh, water, now water, what could be the child with water? Well, uh, regular water is that uh, you buy a bottle of water is kosher for Pesach. If you have it in the five gallon uh, glasses, the uh, glass that you put on top of uh, um, this machine, which um, is out water, so there you should be careful with them because they could have been used. People use these after they finish using the water, so they may use it for something with comments, so that's not so 100%. But if you buy the in, in bottles that are not reusable, so then there should not be any problem with the water unless it is enriched with, especially with citrates, which um, probably or maybe not kosher Pesach, so you should not buy them without a special action for Pesach. Now, the, um, whole fruits and vegetables, which are not kidneys, should not be a problem buying in the supermarket. Um, some people have a minic that they don't eat any vegetables on or fruit on Pesach unless they peel it. So if you have that minic, so you'll peel it. Those fruits that, that uh, cannot be peeled are difficult to be peeled, like tomatoes. You might not want to buy, or maybe you'll f- figure out a way how you can peel tomatoes also. Reynolds cut right wax paper is kosher without a hechsha for Pesach. There are um, various uh, uh, products which. Um, are uh, like Wegmans frozen zucchini noodles, or healthier way veg- veggie noodles, which are even though they're noodles, but they have no grain in it, and so and they actually are kosher. They are kosher pesa. Lipton tea bags is um, the decaf, uh, the, re- the regular decaf and unflavored, are kosher. For Pesach. Now, in, in general, tea bags, uh, you have to be careful. They shouldn't have any uh, any um, uh, flavors in it, or no dextrose, other things out of it. If they're just regular tea bags, uh, th- these are the ones that we uh, know about. There's a lot of information, as I said before, in the pace in the t- in the la- in 2020 Stark um, Hay Pesach directory. Uh, there's m- much more than I'm telling you now, and uh, it's good I, if you're interested in it, to go and, and get, get hold of one. Now, sugar 
if it's pure cane sugar, if there's no dextrose added, um, it should be kosher. That does not apply to confectionery sugar or to brown or to brown sugar. Those need a special hechsha for Pesach. If you can get it with hechsha for Pesach, silver so polish, uh, Gardas, Haggadi, Wayman, and um, um, other. The um, uh, there's other companies that are kosher for Pesach without a special Pesach hechsha. Now, the seltzers, if any unflavored, just water without any um, uh, citrates in it, should be kosher for Pesach. Scarring powder uh, uh, pads like brillo pads. Any of them is plain without any soap in it, should not have any problem. There is um, a salt, if it's non iodized and has no dextrose in it and it has no polysorbase in it, should be no problem, don't need any hexha. Raw poultry um, from Birdsboro, Empire. Um, uh, KJ and uh, quality kosher or wise organic uh, premier cold foods. These, if they have a regular hechsha for during the year, you can use them for Pesach without a special Pesach. Hechsha, raw meat, uh, you can use from grown behold, cold foods, um, the, and uh, ask locally. If you can, what other ones are available to use without a special hechsha? Now, plastic plates are no problem. Paper napkins are no problem. However, and also the plastic cutlery and bags and wrap of plastic is no problem. However, as far as plates go, so the plastic plates are no problem, but the paper plates should not be used on Pesach, um, there are, in the paper place, there is a starch in it, and um, it's uh, not recommended. Easy off oven cleaner is kosher without any hechsha at all. Um, the hand san sanitizer, this year, we can't be so particular, the stores are running out of it, so whichever hand sanitizer you get your hand on, you can assume that it is kosher. And uh, ice, if you buy ice, you can buy it, except it's from New York, there, there may be some cocoa pods in the water. And actually, if it's clear ice, you can actually look through it and you can see the cocoa pods. They're not that, they're not that small. Um, but uh, if you live elsewhere out of New York, there should not, there should not be any problem. Reconstructed real lemon juice is kosher without any special hechsha for Pesach milk. If you can't get a kosher Pesach milk, you should uh, buy it before. You should buy it before Pesach. Raw nuts. If there's no in the packaging, there's no BHA or BHT. Um, that uh, they should be kosher for Pesach unless it says on them that they're made in a place which um, also produces uh, chametz or uh, uh, kidneys. The um, nuts in general are kosher. Uh, um, raw, uh, they haven't been roasted, nothing's been done with them, just raw nuts. Um, peanuts are n um, not used by many people uh, on Pesach, and for sure you cannot eat any donuts on Pesach. So as far as olive goes, pompian, extra virgin olive oil, um, you could use without a special hexa of Pesach, and there are many other types of olive oil, uh, some of them which are listed in the Pesach directory of the Star K. Now, ble bleach is no problem with chlorine bleach or ammonia. Uh, they are all kosher for pesos without any special hechsha. Baby food, pr 
probably is Chametz, even if it's just um, if it's just uh, uh, apples, apple sauce. The reason why it may be Chametz is because they also make baby food with grain in it. And um, if since it's made with grain, it's all made on the same machinery, it is, even though in this there's no actual hummus there, but there's a taste of hummus in there. And if you want to give, let's say, a baby um, rice cereal, because the baby, if they need rice cereal, they're allowed to eat rice on Pesach, because it's not hummus, it's just kidneys, so we don't eat it. If your baby needs it, you can eat it. And if you can't get a kosher of Pesach, uh, you probably can't get a rice um, cereal kosher Pesach, but the one for matzah meal is not for a baby that can't eat any wheat yet. So you would have to cook up rice yourself in a kosher Pesach pot. You wouldn't use it anymore for a Pesach, just use it for the baby, for, for the rice, and um, give it to the baby that way. Contact paper doesn't need any hechsha, uh, and all the glue you don't have to worry about. Candles are no problem. Uh, unflavored dental floss is not a problem. Dried food we don't eat without a hechsham pesach. Um, aluminum foil pans should not need any hechsha. Um, the um, uh, hydrogen peroxide is not a problem and uh, honey, even if it's pure honey and has a aksha, if it doesn't have actual or peso, you should not use it. There could be the problems with it. Um, and the uh, nail polish has no problem. Nail, nail polish remover has no problem for Pesach. All mineral oils cost for Pesach without any aksha. Um, all Vaseline Petroleum jelly is, uh, all petroleum jelly shouldn't have a problem if it's just uh, petroleum jelly. Uh, the wine, which is kosher, of course, wine has to have a heksha, but it's not 100% uh, necessarily kosher for Pesach. Check the bottle and make sure to see whether it is kosher for Pesach. Now, Mechiros Chametz is going to be a challenge this year because uh, how do you uh, do that? Oh, um, you can't get in touch with, uh, in person with the Rav who's going to sell it for you. So, to, to a point, there are two st parts of Mechiros Chametz. One part is that you give the, the Rav who you, through whom you're going to sell the Chametz power of attorney to sell your Chametz. That's one thing. And secondly, you're giving him a power of attorney to rent the places where the Chametz lies. So it is customary that when you give this uh, shlichus to the Rav that you pick up, he'll give you a pen or something else that you pick up and you make a Kenyan. Now that Kenyan is not mandatory, it is customary. But in cases like today where it's not so easy to do that, so it's not really necessary. You can just appoint him by telling him you're appointing him to be to be a shliach. <coughs> the, there's a second part of Mechiras Chametz which the Rav does with the with the uh, guy. He has to sell to the guy, and there you can do that over the phone. You have to actually make kinyanim, and he has to give him the star, and he needs the star. And part of the star is that uh, together with saying that he's selling all the Chametz, so the people are designating him to sell the Chametz, he has to give him the um, document which says that he's authorized, and it has to be legal, that means he needs the signature of the one who's, who signs it, or the one who's making him the shliach, and in it it should say where he lives, and where the, where, what, it, what he's selling, and um, Hopefully, we'll say how much it's worth, the person thinks it's worth. So the guy should have an idea what he's buying. Is he buying a million dollars worth of chametz, or is he buying uh, one dollar's worth of chametz? So that, uh, you can send him in the form in, through the mail. 
you can also work it out through email um, as long as the, uh, there's a signature on there uh, which is legally binding so a digital signature to my understanding is legally binding according to the law of the United States and uh, the rogue will print out the uh, the star, the document, and then he'll have it to deal with the with the guy with the mechiras chametz. Now, let me speak a little bit about tevilas kalim, about um, the tevilas kalim. If you have to buy kalim, which required tevila from a non-Jew, or they were once in the possession of a non-Jew, that they need tevila. So if the mikros uh, of uh, Tvil's Kalim are going to be closed, so the um, question is, how, how do you do that? So there, to sell it to a guy, and you sell it to a guy and it's the property of the guy, then it is uh, not doesn't require Tvila. You only need Tvila if you now it is the person of the yid. So, however, the Taz says it doesn't help because if you sell to the guy and you're using it, so the guy sees right away that this is not a real sale and he doesn't have any intent to acquire it. It's not the same as Mechiris Chametz because when you sell the Chametz to the guy, the yid doesn't use it and the guy has the right to go into and it's in the guy's property because you rented him the property and the guy has the right to go in at any time that he wants and uh, take the chametz but over here you're using it and you're not uh, in bonds of the guy that's really a contradiction so therefore that doesn't help now there are s- some uh, opinions like Rav Shlomo Zalm Arabach Zechitz Bracha who held that if it's ownerless that no one owns it that it doesn't need tefila, so not everyone agrees with that. But in this case, where we're dealing with the shas al chak, you need a pot for Pesach. You don't have one; you have to buy one, and you can't buy a, a pot made out of plastic. They don't make them out of plastic; uh, it would burn. So the, you have no choice. So in such a case, the was so for the evidence on the from Zalman that if you're buying it from a Goisha place, you can pay them the money and have intention not to acquire it. And you should have intention not to acquire it even though you're using it. And you can use it through the whole of Pesach until the Bansha will have Rahman Sanas and the Xer will go away and we'll be able to tell Kim again. At that point you should have intention to acquire it. You pick it up with intention of acquiring it, and then you uh, you'll toil it with a bracha. Now, if you avoid it from a yid, it doesn't help not to acquire it, because uh, it doesn't help not to, uh, to think you don't want to acquire it, because it already was mochim tefila before you bought uh, you bought it from the from the yid, because he got it from a guy. So, in such a case, the shlam zam is make a l'shas adchak that you could be mafkrit. So you need three people and, and in front of them you would say that I am relinquishing all ownership on this on this part, whatever it is, and um, anyone can come and take it. And then after no one takes it, you can take it and have intention not to acquire it, like I said before, and then after Yantuf, so whenever they will be able to be tabled again, maybe it'll be on Yantuf, maybe it'll be before Yantuf, whenever it will be, so then you will pick it up with the intention of acquiring it and you will table it with a bracha in in a kalamikha. So the um, so that's how it will be for this year. Um, if someone has to buy a part which um, would need tefillah. Now this year there's not going to be the communal burning of chametz, to my understanding. 
because people crowd around and um, we need permission from the city, a permit, and it's not so easy to get. So the question is, what, what should we do with that? So if a person has a barbecue, so you can burn it in his, in his barbecue uh, um, oven, a uh, barbecue grill. Um, it have to be burnt before the time that you are required to burn it, which would be before in a Baltimore before 11.38, uh, maybe 11.30. And then when it's burning, you say the Kol Hamira, which we say typically at the time of burning Hametz. Now, if you want to do it in your, if you have a fireplace in your house, so then you could burn it in the fireplace. But if you don't have a barbecue grill and you don't have a fireplace, or the fireplace doesn't, doesn't work, they, for some reason, they uh, stopped the chimney, they uh, took out the chimney because it was leaking rain uh, into the house or the place where the chimney and roof connected, and so they just decided to forget about the chimney. For whatever reason, if you can't do that, so then, the, what the, the Eitzah is, that really, according to the strict halacha, you don't have to burn the chametz, you just have to get rid of the chametz. Uh, one of the ways is that you powder it uh, up a fire of a zayra ruach, you powder it up and throw it into the wind, or you put it into the river. So either way, you don't have it anymore, got rid of it. So, it also would be included in that to cut it up into small pieces and to put it in the toilet. Uh, that way it's also considered that you have destroyed it. So you can do that. Uh, that would be probably the, the better way to do it. Make sure you cut it into small pieces, because otherwise it's going to uh, stuff up this, the system and make even more problems. Um, and then, um, that would be the way to do it. Now, if you do use your barbecue um, grill, you make sure that you don't put, any, or whatever you use to burn it, you make sure you don't put any lighter fluid on the chametz before you burn it, because once you put lighter fluid on it, it's not fit to be eaten by a dog anymore, and then you haven't fulfilled the mitzvah of burning the chametz, which is what we're trying to do. You just got rid of it by making it not fit to be eaten by a dog. If you if you uh, if you uh, start to burn it without any lighter fluid, then put the lighter fluid on later while it's burning. That's even worse, because that's why it's just sakana, and to, to do that and, uh, and for sure no one should even uh, think about doing something like that. The uh, Faz, the Siyam, is uh, for Bukhairim is concerned this year, so since the shuls are all closed, and we won't be able to have any Siyam Bukhairim, because uh, it means people are going to gather together. It's my thinking, and, I, and the thinking of the Vada Rabbanim of Baltimore, that as long as you um, hear this end of the Siyam, and there'll be uh, telephone conference calls available, and you can hear the person finish. You can make the seam in your own house. You don't have to be part of the communal uh, food, which is served uh, typically after a seam. However, as a matter of fact, when you make a seam on a masechta, any masechta during the year, you don't have to have uh, invite 50 people to rejoice with you. You can just uh, do it f with yourself, but you have to make a special suda for the uh, occasion. So here also, you can't just listen to the seum and eat your regular breakfast. You'd have to have something special, um, like um, if it could be cake, which you don't usually have for breakfast. Um, Arab Pesa probably don't have too much cake lying around. So you could use kosher Pesach. Uh, you, you, uh, you can't use kosher Pesach cookies, which have matzah meal in it, because you're not allowed to eat matzah on uh, kosher Pesach matzah on Arab Pesach. But you can have the ones where people don't eat kabrot, which is made out of uh, 
um, cornstarch or whatever, we should make a shahakalon. You can do that. So if she's something special, they don't normally eat, they covered the siyam. So as long as you hear the person say the siyam, even though it's on the phone, it is, it's going to be a good siyam. Now the uh, Badikas Chametz, um, I want to say something over here that may make it easier for some uh, women to um, check to um, uh, to clean the house for Pesach, it might make it more difficult. But I will say the truth, but to understand this, I would want to start off by saying that this um, chiyuv to check for chametz is really the husband. He's the one who owns the chametz, and he's the one who has to really check the house. But the women have taken upon themselves, Nashim Tzidkanias, to help their husbands and do the the um, brunt of all the work of cleaning the house before the husband does the ceremonial, really, checking for chametz on the night before Pesach. So, the question is, what uh, do you have to look for? So, there is a difference um, between the uh, uh, Torah authorities. Um, what, what's the reason for B'dikah's chametz? Rashi says that the reason is so you should not come to transgress the din of um, of uh, having comments in your house. The Torah says, Shivas Yom, Sola Yimotsu Vatechem, you don't have to have any comments. There's three things about comments. One, you don't have to have it. The other one is you don't have to eat it. And the other one is you don't have to have benefit from it. So if you walk past a bakery and you smell the good smell of fresh baked bread, uh, so you know how to have that um, th that um, feeling of the good feeling of the fresh smell because you're benefiting from chametz. Even though you don't own the chametz and belongs to a guy, you can't eat chametz belongs to a guy either. You don't you don't have the avera of owning it, which is says you can't own it but uh, you do have the very of benef uh, benefiting from it. So the, um, so, the, so Rashi says, because you shouldn't be ever by Rabbi Matzeh. Uh, Tosa says that the reason why you have to check for Chalmers is you shouldn't by mistake come to eat it, because you eat it the whole year. So you're not, you, it's not like something which is trafe the whole year that a person's careful about. And so, therefore, the Chazal said that you have to check for it to make sure it's done in the house. Now, there's a very big difference between these two reasons. I don't want to bore you with all the reasons for the halachas, but it's important for you to understand what, uh, the reason behind it, to understand what the halacha is. According to Rashi, who says the reason is that you should not uh, be over by your own matzah, you're not over on this over by your own matzah, having chametz in your possession, if it is less than a kazayas. So how much is a kazayas? A kazayas is uh, the size of a um, ten, uh, of a ping pong ball. It's like the size of a ping, ping pong ball. That's the size, that's the size of a kazayas. The, um, according to those say you shouldn't come to eat it, even if it's less than that size, you also have to check for the chamas. But there's another difference between them, that according to Rashi, who says the reason is because you shouldn't be able to buy your body in Matzai, what happens if you have a kazayas, but it's in a place where it's dirty? Let's say it's in a garbage, it's in a, a garbage can, or on the, on the, in a dirty place where you wouldn't eat it, you still have to check for it. Quantitas said that the reason is that you shouldn't come to eat it if it's a place where a normal person would not eat it, because it's not um, something which a uh, person would eat because it's dirt. So then, or it's been contaminated with dirt, then you don't have to check for it. So, w since we pass like both of them together, any chamas which is more than a kazayas and is in the, uh, which is more than a kazayas or is in a place where you might come to eat it, you have to check for it. If it is less than a kazayas, and it's in a place where you wouldn't come to eat it, so then 
you do not have to check, check for it. You can leave it there. So if there's chalons between the floorboards, um, you don't have to check for it because it's that's not the Zion, so you're not going to come to eat it. Therefore, it is the custom in uh, most places that any food that falls on the floor on Pesach, if you can wash it off, you should wash it off. Maybe some crumbs that were on the floor got stuck to it. But if you can't wash it off, the meaning is not to eat it until after Pesach. So you can put it on the side and don't eat it. It's just a piece of cake. You can't wash it off. So, uh, or a piece of matzah. So then you don't need it anymore uh, on that Pesach. Now, getting a little bit more practical. So if you have an armchair, and between the lean of the armchair and the seat of the armchair, you put your hand in and you can feel there's some crumbs over there, you do not ha have to worry about them because they're less than a kazayas and they are, um, no one's going to come to eat it over there. So there we can leave it there. If you um, have in your car, you have to check your car also for chametz. So if it is less than a, a and it's very common to find chametz between the car seat and the car lean on the back, uh, on the on the bottom where they meet, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do anything about it because no one's going to come to eat it, and it's less than a kazais. Now, if it will be more than a kazais, even if you, no one's going to come to eat it, you would have to get rid of it. But that's not very common that that should happen. Now, you only have to check in a place where there is reason, uh, reason to have a suspicion that there might be chametz. If it's in a place where there's no reason to assume that there might be chametz, if you have a sh high shelf on a, in a closet where it will be very unlikely that um, there's any chametz over there, you don't have to check it, even because it's very unusual, so you don't have to check for it. Now, if there's in a place where in the middle of the meal you might uh, um, um, need something from this closet and it's, uh, you may have put, you need two hands to get it down, maybe you ha have a sandwich that you're eating or some cookie, which is hummus, and you put it down on the shelf in order to help you take off this other thing. So if there's such a reason to be suspicious about that, then you would have to check it. But if that's not a, a, a normal thing for you, you do not have to check it at all. If you have chametz that fell behind the stove, you know it fell behind the stove. Uh, let's say it's a, it's a, um, uh, a donut or a bagel, fell behind the stove. So if you can move the stove by yourself, so then you should do that and, uh, and uh, get rid of it. If you can get it out from behind the stove with a stick or something, um, so then you should do that. But if you cannot get to it without moving the stove, and let's say it's a gas stove and you need a plumber to come and disconnect it in order to move it, you're not required to do that. We say it's like it is buried and you can leave it over there. And since we uh, um, uh, we are about the Bahamas, we say we consider it like it is dirt in the street and it's uh, on us. So one is not uh, doesn't have to consider, uh, do anything about it. Same thing is behind the refrigerator or the freezer. If you can just move it to yourself, move the refrigerator or uh, freezer, so then you should do that. If you can, without moving it, you can get. Uh, if you can get a broom or something behind it and, and pull it forward and get rid of the chametz, you're required to do that. If you can't and you need uh, to have someone else to help you move it, you don't have to do that and you can consider it buried and um, you can just leave it wherever it is, even though that it is more than a kazais. And uh, something, the uh, same idea would be, let's say you have a room in the basement or in a shed or in a garage that you just throw all your junk in. And if you want to check this uh, place, you would have to move everything out and it'll take you all day to take everything out. It's uh, You don't have to do that. You can consider it. You don't go there. You just uh, just use it as a storage facility. And you don't, uh, and it's a big tircha, big bother to get everything out. So then you can just leave it there and consider it as if it is 
uh, buried, which it will be okay. Um, now, um, people have asked me that since they're worried about a shortage of food, that they want to buy chametz before Pesach, and s even though they don't normally sell real chametz, and um, in order they should have uh, to what to eat after Pesach, because um, this year who knows what, what's going to be. The uh, one should not do that. Not only is it um, this yominig not to sell real chametz. But there's a very big difference between the uh, people who normally don't want to sell real chametz, which is maybe more of a uh, chumrah than this case. Because if you sell cham, if a person who sells chametz, he doesn't mind if the guy decides not to sell it back. He doesn't have to sell it back. That's in understood in the sale. If it's understood that he has to sell it back then the whole sale is not valid because it's just a sale for a uh, you just selling to him for a limited amount of time and, and that's not really enough it's still considered your chamas but over here if, when you sell if you have chamas and you sell it so then the guy may not sell back may keep it you don't mind if he keeps it because if he keeps it he's going to have to pay for it so let it be that way, let him, let him pay you for it. But over here, where you don't want him to buy it back, because you know, the whole purpose in selling it to him is that you should be able to have it for after Pesach, so you don't really want the sale to be a real sale. You don't want him to, you want him to give it back. So it's right to be kiyumai, and there's a difference of opinion in the post game whether the sale is effective in the first place. So that for sure you should not do. The... Um, so even if your meaning is to sell chametz, you should not. Uh, you should not real chametz. You should not do not do that if you want it to be there for after Pesach. Now, if you're really worried about after Pesach, why don't you buy uh, twice as much matzah? And there's plenty of kosher Pesach foods that you can buy, and um, no one's going to starve. I remember during the uh, World War Two when food was really scarce and if you had children they were allowed one egg a month uh, that was rationed everything was rationed one egg a month if it was available and uh, half the time it wasn't available I mean, if it was available you couldn't buy more than one egg a month the uh, f uh, fruit was uh, rationed uh, meat was rationed all, all types of food was rationed Clothing was rationed. Shoes, you can only buy one pair of shoes every once a year. And um, uh, hats, you, yeah, all kinds of clothing was all rationed. So, Baruch Hashem, we're not uh, holding by that madrega. We don't have to worry about uh, having food. There'll be food, maybe not the food that you like. But it doesn't matter as long as we're living uh, there's enough food to live, that's all we really have to be concerned about. And Baruch Hashem, I don't think it's going to be a problem. And as I say, if you are worried about it, buy kosher Pesach food, even kidneys, which we don't eat on Pesach, but you're allowed to buy it before Pesach, and uh, you don't have to even sell it, you can keep it allowed to Pesach without any, without any problems. So, we daven at home. So there are, on, on Shabbos, um, we say this Yikum Purkan. Um, the first Yikum Purkan you don't say, the second one you don't say, the Mishaberach afterwards you also don't say. Because the uh, second Yikum Purkan is down for the Tzibur, and so is the Mishaberach of Zeno of Yaakov, you both call a call a Kodesh Azeh, so you don't say that because we're not uh, we're not in the, in a shul, and um, so so it's not said. The um, I actually got questions from many people whether this year we can be makele to eat kidneys because it's brought down in the 
for Pesach is brought down the disk of Zer of Kitnis is Takana Saka Ainam, it's not from the mention in the Gemara. And the Svaradam actually eat Kitnis on, on Pesach, like rice and uh, peas and things that, that Ashkenazim don't eat. And sometimes when there was a famine and there was nothing to eat, they permitted it. So I got questions whether you're allowed to, whether this year we were allowed to do that, and when we, whether we could be mako on various types of foods that maybe we don't need a hechsh of a Pesach this year, because maybe there's going to be a shortage. And uh, some people ask, we can't get uh, hand matzahs, we can eat machine matzahs, all kinds of questions. But one question I didn't get, and that is, can you, someone who has a minute not to eat gebrot, whether this year he could eat gebrot? That question I didn't get. So it seems that this is something which is very serious for people, and um, the, uh, they don't have to know that question. So, what do we learn from this whole, uh, from, what are we supposed to learn from it? The Apostle says, La shav hi kisi es benechem musa la I um, gave problems to uh, Kla Yisrael, but it was all for nothing because they didn't learn any musa from it. So the Vajram has given us this affliction of this coronavirus pandemic, and though we so it's there, so we should learn some musa from it. So. I think that one of the things that we can learn from over here is that you don't have to invite 400 people to a wedding. It's actually possible to get married if you only have a minion. It's also uh, considered a kosher kedushin, that everything is down according to Allah. And uh, there's, we don't have a problem uh, with, with all this multitude of people. The same thing applies for all of our simchas whether we um, have, uh, whether it's um, a, a seum, whether it's a, um, a mitzvah, or certainly a bas mitzvah, or if it's a pidin um, a, uh, bris, whatever it is, we can learn from here that it's not really important to have all these people, don't have to invite all our friends, and it's still going to be kosher. Matter of fact, um, the bris is kosher, even if the, the only the male and the baby are there. That's all that is really mark of. So you want to have the father there? Okay, fine, I, I can understand that. If you want to have a sandik, maybe you can make or have a sandik. Maybe the father himself could be the sandik. Or maybe the male could be the sandik. So there's a, there are, um, it's not important to have all these people over there. That's one lesson that we should learn. It's also not important to what kind of uh, clothing a person wears, what kind of dress a woman uh, wears, who cares, what difference does it make, do you have to have, the, everyone should be a color scheme. Not important, these things are not important. We should learn this lesson that we can do without that. So as I mentioned before, that in World War II, that everything was rationed. Well, where I was, I was in a fruit store, and there was a, a hanging on from the fruit store from the ceiling, a bunch of bananas, like maybe they had uh, 15 bananas on a bunch. I n didn't know what it was, because I'd never seen a banana. So until uh, after the war, then I saw a banana, then I understood what, what it was. So there's a, uh, yeah, we shall learn, I think, to get along with less. That's an easy lesson that we can learn from all this. I think that maybe that's one of the things that Ibanshom is trying to tell us. The, um, so, so during the war, in the whole shul, there was only one lulu of an asterisk, which the shul had bought for a lot of money, and everyone in the shul used that same lulu of an asterisk. So, the, um, so Baruch Hashem, today we are uh, basically considered a much higher standard of living than we were during that period of time, 
but we should understand that it's not really important. Now there are um, certain things that I mentioned before which are important to know, like aspirin, tablets, tumbea is uh, Kashla Pesach, even the low dose 81 milligram uh, chewable tablets uh, of cherry and orange are Kashla Pesach without any special Heksha Motrin. Um, so the uh, the infant drops dye free berry is flavor is Kashla Pesach the children's suspension of the dye free berry and berry is or they're also Koshla Pesa, Tal Nal, regular strength and also the extra uh, the extra strength tabs and the the, extra, the regular strength tabs and the extra t uh, strength capsules are have no Pesa problem. The Tal Nal children's suspension is Koshla Pesach the uh, there are the arid deodorant, the menon, speed stick, uh, the uh, no problem with Pesach, Colgate mouthwash, um, is uh, uh, kosher. Not only is it kosher with Pesach, but it's even kosher during the year because the glycerin and it is the vegetables the glycerin, Listerine cool mint antiseptic. Uh, mouthwash is Koshla Pesach, so scope. Head and shoulders shampoo can be used on Pesach. Prel Classic Clean uh, um, uh, shampoo is also Koshla Pesach. Dal soap, ivory bar, ivory liquid, iris spring bar, uh, soaps, they're all can be used on Pesach. Soft soap liquid and body wash can be used AM. Um, Emmy, um, the, the uh, now talking about uh, toothpaste. So there is Colgate toothpaste, Pepsodent um, toothpaste, and Ultra Bright. They are all uh, can be used on Pesach without any special hashing. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm over time already. But I'll just end with the thought that um, Mr. Shem will get out of this uh, um, predicament of the coronavirus. The Bansham has already helped us that even though in New York there's 30,000 confirmed cases of people that have it, um, in, and uh, quite a few have passed away, um, in Maryland, the whole state of Maryland has only been 436 cases, which is less than Shisham of how many cases that you, we that they were in New York. So there's bottle for Shisham, and there's um, only uh, the four people I think who died from it so far. I'm just sending Bonshaw to help, and same way he helped us till now. It should continue to help us, and we should. Hope that this is one of the of the things that Bonshon felt necessary to do before the coming of the Mashiach. The Arabi may not make.